Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using moment distribution method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span BC and span CD. Also, there are two overhanging spans. On the left side, we have a overhanging span AB. On the right side, we have a overhanging span DE. So, we have overhanging on both of the sides. In the overhanging AB, we have a point load 30 kN in the point A. In the span BC, there is a point load 20 kN acting in the center. In the span CD, there is UDL 12 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the overhanging span DE, we have UDL 12 kN per meter. In this analysis, we have to find totally 6 moments. In the joint B, we have to find MBA and MBC. In the joint C, we have to find MCB and MCD. And finally, in the joint D, we have to find MDC and MDE. So, totally we have to find 6 moments. Also, we have to calculate 3 reactions. RB, RC and RD. In the joint B, we can easily calculate the moments MBA and MBC because there is overhanging on the left of B. To calculate MBA, we have to multiply this load with the overhanging distance. When we do that, we are getting 60 kN meter. MBA should be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. MBA and MBC will have the same values, but the sign only will be different. MBA should be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. MBC should be negative because it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. But both of the values will be same. In this concept, we can calculate MBC. Just we have to change the sign of MBA. So for MBC, we are getting minus 60 kN meter. In the same way, we can calculate the moments MDC and MDE in the joint D. To calculate MDE, we have to multiply the UDL with the overhanging distance and a distance by 2. We know that when the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance upon 2 to find the moment. Here we have to be very careful. MDE is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So, we have to apply the load with the negative sign. That is why we are getting a negative moment. The values of MDC and MDE will be same, but they will have the different signs. MDE is negative because it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. MDC should be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. But both of them will be having the same values. In this concept, we can calculate MDC. We have to just change the sign of MDE. When we do that, we are getting MDC as 54 kN meter. Now, let us calculate the fixed end moments. We don't have to calculate the fixed end moments in the overhanging spans. Only we have to calculate them in the spans BC and CD. Let us calculate the fixed end moments in the span BC. In the span BC, there is a point load 20 kN. It is acting in the center. The formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Let us apply the values inside the formulas. W is 20, L is 4. When we apply the values, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now, let us make the fixed end moments in the span CD. 
In the span CD, there is UDL, 12 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Let us apply the values inside the formulas. W is 12, L is 4. After applying, we are getting M of CD and M of DC. In the moment distribution method, we have to find the distribution factor. We have to calculate the distribution factor only in the joints. Here there are three joints, joint B, joint C and joint D. On the left of B, there is overhanging. So no need to calculate the distribution factor in the joint B because we can easily say that for the overhanging part, the distribution factor will be 0 and on the other side, it will be 1. So the distribution factor for BA is 0 and for BC it is 1. On the right of joint D, there is overhanging. So in the joint D also, no need to calculate the distribution factor. For the overhanging side, it will be 0 and on the other side it will be 1. So for DE the distribution factor is 0 and for DC it is 1. In this case we have to calculate the distribution factor only in the joint C. To calculate the distribution factor we need to find the stiffness. Let us see the formula to calculate the stiffness. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA by L. If the fair end is hinged or with roller support, the formula is 3EA by L. If the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4EA by L. In the joint C, first let us calculate the stiffness for CB. For that, from the joint C, we have to look at the point B. In the point B, there is a hinged support. If the fair end is hinged, the formula for stiffness is 3EA upon L. Length of CB is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of CB, we are getting 0.75EI. Now, let us calculate the stiffness for CD. For that, from the joint C, we have to look at the point D. In the point D also, there is a hinged support. So, we have to apply the same formula, 3EA upon L. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of CD, we are getting 0.75EA. On the left of point B, there is overhanging span. So, we should not consider the point B as continuous. Also, on the right of point D, there is overhanging. So, we should not consider the point D as continuous. Let us calculate sigma k. For that, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting 1.5 EI. Now, let us calculate the distribution factor. The formula is k upon sigma k. Using the formula, we can calculate the distribution factor values. Now, let us start making the moment distribution table. In the table, first let us enter all of the members. Then, let us enter the distribution factor values. Then, let us enter the fixed end moments. In the span BC, we have calculated two fixed end moments. Let us apply them. In the span CD also, we have calculated two fixed end moments. Let us apply them. For BA, we have calculated the final moment MBA. Let us apply this also in the table. For DE also, we have calculated the final moment. MDE. Let us apply that also in the table. For BC, we have already calculated the final moment MBC. 
which is equal to minus 60 kN meter. So, we have to make BC minus 60. For BC, the fixed end moment is minus 10. When we add minus 50 with this minus 10, we will get minus 60. So, we have released BC and we have to give the carry over from BC to CB. When we divide minus 50 by 2, we will get minus 25. We have also calculated the final moment for DC, MTC, which is equal to 54 kN meter. So, we have to make DC 54. For DC, the fixed end moment is 16. When we add 38 with this 16, we will get 54. So, we have released DC. We have to give carry over from DC to CD. When we divide 38 by 2, we will get 19. Now, let us calculate. We adjusted fixed end moments. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 15. When we add these two values, we are getting 3. Now, let us make the distribution. We know that we can make the distribution only in the joints. In the joint B and in the joint D, we cannot make the distribution because we have already calculated the final moments. In this case, we can make the distribution only in the joint C. First, let us make the distribution for CB. For that, we have to add these two fixed end moments, then multiply with the distribution factor at CB. When we do that, we are getting a negative value. So, we are entering inside the table as positive. Now, let us do the distribution for CD. For that, we have to add these two values and then multiply with the distribution factor at CD. When we do that, here also we are getting a negative value. So, we are entering inside the table as positive. Then, we have to make the carry over. We cannot make the carry over between BC and CB because we have released BC and found the final moment. Also, we cannot make the carry over between CD and DC because we have released DC and found the final moment. In this case, we cannot continue further. Let us add the values and find the final moments. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 9. When we add these two values, we are getting 9. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. For MCB, we got a negative value. That means MCB is acting in the anticlockwise direction. For MCD, we got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. Initially, we assumed that MCB would be acting in the clockwise direction and MCD would be acting in the anticlockwise direction. But our assumption is wrong. MCB is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MCD is acting in the clockwise direction. Now, let us calculate the vertical reactions. Let us take the overhanging span AB and the span BC together and calculate the vertical reactions. When we take them together, no need to consider MBA and MBC. They will get eliminated. Only we have to consider MCB which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. In these spans, first I am going to calculate RB. For that, I am going to take moment about C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The point load 30 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So, it will be negative. And the distance is 6 meter. So, minus 30 into 6. RB is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So, it will be positive. 
and the distance is 4. So for RB, the point load 20 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 2 meter. So 20 into 2. Finally, there is a movement which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. After the calculations, we are getting RB which is equal to 57.25 kN. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and calculate RC1. For RC1, we will get a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RC1 is acting upwards but actually it is acting downwards. Now let us take the spans CD and the overhanging span DE together and calculate the vertical reactions. When we take them together, no need to consider MDC and MDE, they will get eliminated. Only we have to consider MCD which is acting in the clockwise direction. In these spans, first I am going to calculate RC2. For that, I am going to take movement about D. RC2 is acting towards the point D in the clockwise direction. So, it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter. So, for RC2, then we have to take the UDL. We have to split the UDL into two parts. First, in the span CD, then in the overhanging DE. In the span CD, it is acting towards the point D in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply the load with the distance and distance upon 2. Now, let us take the UDL in the overhanging DE. It is acting towards the point D in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 3. So, 12 into 3 into 3 upon 2. Then, we have a moment which is acting in the clockwise direction. So, it will be positive. Finally, we are getting RC2 which is equal to 8.25 kN. Then, let us apply the rule. Sigma V is equal to 0. Using the rule, let us calculate RD which is equal to 75.75 kN. Now, let us add RC1 and RC2. After adding, we are getting RC. Now, I am going to calculate the shear force values. I am going to start from the point A and move towards the point E. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using that, we can calculate the shear force values. Using the values, we can make the shear force diagram. Now, let us make the free movement diagram. Now, let us make the end movement diagram. Using the direction of the movements, we have to make the end movement diagram. If the end movement diagram comes above this line, that will be negative. If it comes below the line, that will be positive. So here it is negative and here it is positive. Now let us combine the free movement diagram and the end movement diagram so that we are getting the bending movement diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.